We are blessed by God. Coming up a teaching on why we are blessed by God and how it does apply to our lives today right here on In Power Life. Empowered Life with Dr. Yoli. There has been a teaching in the Christian church that has taught that black people were cursed. Ham was cursed. Well, I do an in-depth teaching, not a very long teaching, but a detailed teaching that explains that black people are not cursed, but are in fact blessed by God. However, we learn when we go back that when we go back to the history and we read about the Willie Lynch theory and what he encouraged the slave masters in the United States to implement would last 300 years. Well, I'm here to tell you we were never cursed in the first place. And so here coming up a teaching will help you understand that we are blessed by God and not cursed by Him. And that the only cursings in the earth are the ones that we put upon ourselves by the things that we do. So in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, read with me. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So I asked the question throughout the, the chapter. I was asking God questions. I said, let me be the congregation. Let me ask the questions that they would ask. And so the first question I asked, why Abram and not his younger brother Nahor? And so in order to answer that question, I have to tell you a little bit about their history. Terah had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. All three sons were married. Haran had three children, Milcah, Ishkah, and Lot. And then Haran died. Milcah married her uncle Nahor. They had eight children. They became the grandparents of Rebekah and Naaman. Late Naaman. If you remember, Rebekah re marries Isaac, and Jacob marries one of or both daughters of Naaman. Tara adopts Lot. Why? Because Haran is dead and Lot is single. So he is now Terah's son. Tara was the chieftain. He was the leader of his people. We could consider him as the king. He was the king of the Chaldeans. In rabbinical teachings, this is what I learned. That Tara was a repentant idol worshiper, worshiper. The story is told this way, that Abram worked in his father's shop. They made idols. And Abram detests idols. A woman came to purchase an idol, and Abram broke them. Tara came into the shop and said, what did you do? What happened here? And Abram said, the big one Attack the smaller ones. <laughs> and Tara said, impossible. They're not allowed to do that and fight. And he realized what he said. They were not alive. And his heart was turned towards the true God. Uh -huh. At that moment, he realized that they were not living gods. Right. Are you with me? Say with me. Amen. So Tara heard from God first. We don't see it specifically that says that God spoke to Terah, but we know that God spoke to Terah first when we go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. I need you to turn there because I need you to be with me. I need you to stay with me today because I'm going to bounce just a little bit, but I'm not going to go far. 
In Genesis chapter 11, just back up one page. Mm -hmm. Verse 31 says, And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, which was also his daughter, to Sarah, his son Abram's wife. And they went out with them from Ur. Ur is just another word for land, land of the Chaldeans, to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. Verse 32. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Mm -hmm. Now I talked to the Lord about this, and I said, please tell me, because I, I don't know a, a single person who have lived past 114 years. And I personally have not known a single person who lived beyond 99, personally. I said, how was it that they lived to be so old? And, and as we're getting closer to, closer to that 70 years of being guaranteed for mankind. And so the Lord said, just imagine it being split in half, that physical body, the physical attributes of a person. So I thought of Tara as being around 100. And then when I thought about Abram being around 75, if I split that in half, he was like unto a 37-year-old. Opposed to what we think of a 75-year-old, aches and pains and gout and do, <laughs> struggling and breathing, all of those issues. That, but that wasn't their physical, that wasn't how their physical make was. Right. They were strong in body, strong in mind, strong in spirit. And so the Bible continues to say, verse 32, so the days of terror were 205 years, and terror died in Haran. Now I ask the question again, but why Abram? But remember, Abram hated idolatry. And furthermore, he would not leave his father's side. Remember, he's the oldest child. Therefore, he was next in line to be the chieftain of his people. He was like Elisha to Elijah. He was going to hang with him no matter what. There was no way that God was going to be able to separate Abram from Terah. And so he spoke to Terah first and gave the assignment to him. And Abram aligned his life with his father under his father's covering. And so he followed his father, him and his family. <clears throat> Abram was also committed and a faithful man. The Bible tells us that he was the friend of God because of his faithfulness. He was also obedient to the voice of God. Although he had an inkling of where he was going because his father already told him they were on their way to Canaan. But he trusted God out of obedience. When we align ourselves with God's word and when we hear his voice and when we read his word and we obey his word, guess what? We're blessed. Yeah, yeah. We're blessed. We're blessed by God. Go back to Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to skip verses 2 and 3 because I'm going to discuss those a little later. I'm at verse 4. It says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He was obedient to do what the Lord said. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Now I ask this question because many people have heard preachers, but Lot wasn't supposed, Lot wasn't supposed to go with Abram. And because he was cursed because of that. And he wasn't supposed to have what he had. But that wasn't true. <laughs> That wasn't true. Because he was now Abram's responsibility. Even if Lot was 40 years old, we have to think of it as half. He was 20. Even if he was 35 years old, we had to think of half. He was like 15 years old, 17 years old. And so if we think about that, that he had no wife, he had no children, he had no responsibility, but he was... But, but he was accountable to his spiritual father or his father now, Abram. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. He was now under the covering of Abram. He was under the covering of Terah. When Terah died, now he was a responsibility under the covering of Abram. Jacob does the same thing with Manasseh and Ephraim. 
Joseph is an Egyptian now, and he has Egyptian responsibility. But Jacob takes Manasseh and Ephraim and brings them, brings them into his family as sons. That's what they did. He took his sons, which they were half Ham, half part of Ham, and they were half Egyptian, and they were half Hebrew. But he took them into this fold, and they were part of the 12 tribes of Israel. There's something about being under the covering of a leader, of a person who's in alignment with God. There is an importance of being under a covering. Yes. Blessings come from being under a covering. Yes. That although I may not be wealthy by some standards, but what I have, God will also bless you with. Are you with me? Protection comes under a covering. That, that is to say that the man and woman of God, who's the covering over a congregation, stands in the gaps. And all of the, all of the arrows and darts that you did not know was coming in, coming your way, missed you because of the man or woman of God's covering. It becomes that shield over you. And so all the dirt and stuff that you did that you got hit with, you deserved. But the stuff that was meant for you that didn't hit you, didn't hit you because of the spiritual covering of y'all. See, y'all don't understand. Amen. Yeah. Healing comes under a covering. Uh -huh. That people will come to a church and people begin to lock arms and believe God and intercede and the leader touch and agree with you for healing. You won't you walk away healed. But that the moment you come from under the covering, see what God does is done forever. But the moment you come from underneath the covering, some illness, some other illness come upon you. Yes, yes. Say with me. <laughs> but I want to point out above all things, the ultimate covering is Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. The ultimate covering is Jesus. Yes. We're back at Genesis chapter 12, verse 5. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Now this, I ask another question, who were all these people? And this answers the question why they went to Haran. They went to Haran to gather people. Here's the thing. Remember, Tara was the chief then. He was over his people. He was over the Chaldean, even over Haran. Haran is done, has died, and so he's going to Haran on his way to, to Canaan. He goes to Haran to get the people and say, come on, we're going to Canaan. Why? Because God told me to. And when he gets there, he dies, and now he passed the baton because Abram had aligned himself with his father. Now the baton was passed to him, and so he gathered the people because now he's responsible, he's the covering of all, all of these people. The people include his family because they didn't travel light. They couldn't. If they did, enemies will overtake them. So they had to travel heavy. You remember the scripture that tells us that Abraham, had, uh, Abraham at the time had 318 soldiers that he trained himself. And so they couldn't travel light, even as being nomads. They travel an area and territory that belonged to someone else that would be overtaken. And so they traveled with their family, and they traveled with servants, and they traveled with soldiers. They had a, they had a city within a city. They, traveled, they were a moving city. Stay with me. Verse 6 says, on Genesis chapter 12, verse 6, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Morah, a place of teaching. And the Canaanites were there, the Canaanites were then in the land. Verse 7, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Now I ask the question, why Canaan? I'm sure you asked that question too. Why Canaan? Why couldn't it be someplace else? Why the place where the Canaanites dwell? So we got to back up about 10 generations and go to Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. We're talking about about 400 years prior. 
In Genesis chapter 9, verse 20, hope you're there. Mm -hmm. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Now this is after he built the ark, the flood, and now they're settled. And the Bible says that Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard these reasons why uh, Ham was cursed. All right, stay with me. One, he saw his father's nakedness and laughed and went and told his brothers. Two, he molested his father while he was drunk. Three, he molested his mother while his father was drunk. And all of those were wrong. Stay with me. All of those were wrong. What happened, not as if I was there, but Ham was not cursed at all, meaning Ham was innocent, but someone was guilty of doing something. I want you to go to Leviticus chapter 18, and I want you to see what I see. Verse 8. Because physically nothing happened to Noah. Not to his physical body, per se. I believe, as many of you probably believe, that Ham and Japheth and Shem saw their father naked probably, if not a hundred thousands of times. Because they probably bathed together. But also remember, Ham is also married and he has children. And so his interest would probably, most likely, not be for his father nor his mother. It has to be someone who has no children, who's probably interested in sex at this time, or at least looking at a woman, and he does something malicious. In Leviticus chapter 18, verse 8, the Bible says, The nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. When we go back to Genesis chapter 9, verse 20, or verse 23, it says, But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulder, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father, which would be the mother. Not the father. So whoever it was, they were more interested in the mother being naked. Stay with me. Go back to Genesis 9, verse 24. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Now, son in Hebrew is Ben, which also means grandson. Remember, Tara took Lot as if it was his son. Then Abram takes Lot as if it was his son. They consider their sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters as their own because it's their seed. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Ham was not the younger son. So it could not possibly have been Ham. Ham was the middle son, but Canaan was the youngest grandson. And so the curse was upon Canaan but how many know that curses are limited? Go to verse 25. Genesis 9, verse 25. Am I teaching okay? Yeah. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan. This is Noah speaking. A servant of servants he shall be to his brothers. His brothers were Cush, Mezram, and Phut. Canaan is cursed. He will be a servant to his brothers. Cush, Mesram,
bedroom and food. I've even heard that because of Ham being cursed, he was cursed with being black complexion. How many know he was just a few shades darker than his brothers and his brothers were dark too? When he was born, he was like red, fire. And then father named him Ham, and Ham just means hot. And so the deal is he would give birth to children who are hot, brown. So Cain is also a servant to brown people too. Are you with me? Stay with me. I want you to see the picture here. That in no way that God had cursed the black man with his complexion being black nor because of what was done. Cain, Canaan was cursed. And here we see he was a servant to his brothers, Cush, Mesram, and Phut. And verse 26 says, and he said, this is Noah speaking, Bless be the Lord, the God of Shem, not the God of Ham, not the God of Japheth, but the God of Shem, because he already knew Shem had the makings of being the one who will carry this thing, who will hear from God, who will obey God, who will do the things that God has called him to do, just as he did as Noah. Now here he continues to say, and he said, Bless be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God, the God of Shem, enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tent under the covering of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Now here's the thing. Japheth is the oldest son, but Shem gets the blessing. And although Japheth is given a blessing of being enlarged, he still has to remain under the covering of Shem. Why? Because of Shem's God. Stay with me. You're going to see the folding, the unfolding, and the bringing together what God is doing in the earth realm and what God spoke to Abram. Stay with me. And so he says, you'll dwell in the tents of Shem under his covering and may Canaan be his servant. Abram was the descendant of Shem. Remember the lineage. Doom, 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 doom. How many know that that curse that was placed on Canaan would have taken place if, if from Shem to Abram or I would say Terah they were obedient. But that tells me that they were not obedient to God. They didn't hear from God and if they heard from God they did not obey God. Otherwise, that curse would have been ended a long time ago. Stay with me. Stay with me. So I ask this question, why the land of Canaan was promised to Abram? Canaanites were wealthy. They were ruthless idol worshipers. Remember the story in Numbers where it shared about how the children of Israel sent ten spies or 12 spies, 10 said, no, nothing will work. And two came back and said, yeah, we can overtake them. Caleb and, uh, and uh, Joshua, amen. That we can overtake them, but there's some beautiful stuff in Canaan. It's a beautiful grass. The grass is greener than anything we've ever seen. And the fruit was so bountiful and huge, but there were giants in the land. We look like grasshoppers. They were flourishing. Under a curse, they were still flourishing. Stay with me. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. In a matter of time, all of that bounty, all of the beauty, all of the beautiful grass, all of that they had acquired would eventually become. Greetings. I'm Dr. Yoli Massenberg, president and founder of SMI Bible College. Courses begin in September 2020. We ask that you go online and apply if you are seeking a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate. Look, our classes will begin online, so there's really no excuse. We are a degree offering institute. If you're not interested in pursuing a degree, 
We also have a non-degree course or program that costs absolutely nothing. You can take classes and receive credit and still cost you nothing. Now, if you're pursuing a degree, of course, there is a tuition contribution. But we ask that you check us out online, see if you like us, and then fill out an application. We'll have open houses, that's right, but they'll be virtual. We want you to know more about us before you make that decision on pursuing your degree at SMI Bible College. We look forward to hearing from you. Visit us online at smibiblecollege.com. God bless. Hi, I'm Laura Amison with Trinity Plus One Transportation, LLC. We are a state certified, bonded, licensed transportation provider for the cities of Hopewell, Petersburg, Colonial Heights, Chester, Richmond, and the counties of Prince George and Chesterfield County, Virginia. If you're tired of unknown arrival times of other transportation providers, contact us, Trinity Plus One Transportation. We transport to medical facilities, places of employment, day support centers, just to name a few. Schedule with us your ride. We provide door-to-door -door service. Let us be the one to transport you to your important destinations. Call us at 804-479-4007 or visit us and like us on Facebook at Trinity Plus One Transportation. We look forward to hearing from you. August 2019 marked the 400th year since the first group of enslaved African people were brought here in this country. This was not a time of commemoration or celebration. This was a time to remember and to mourn. As we approach coming up 401 years, slavery, racism, the transatlantic slave trade, the trails of tears, the Willie Lynch theory, the Japanese internment, the camps, uh, the Jim Crow laws still remain fresh in our minds and etched in the very fabric of this United States. If you are in the Hopewell, Virginia area, we would like for you to join us at the Life Center every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday night for Bible study. SMI Life Center is located at 108 North 7th Avenue, Hopewell, Virginia, 23860. God bless. Empowered Life with Dr. Yoli.